Greetings my brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. Today my topic is intercede for me. How each one of us can always seek the prayers of others. We can seek the prayers of our family members. We can seek from our friends. We seek from everyone whom we see them as a righteous person. Because a righteous person's prayer is very powerful and effective as seen in the scriptures. God has given us a patron saint for each one of us and they are our intercessors. Yes, in the gospel, in the acts of the apostle, we find that Jesus is the mediator who intercedes for us between our creator God and ourselves by humanity. But Jesus has given us a patron saint through st studying their lives. We can really be saved by the power of Lord Jesus Christ within them. So that's very important. So when we ask for prayers from someone whom we consider very righteous or whom we see that they are praying or leading a holy life, those prayers are definitely very important. And you can really see that effect of that prayer if you have given any particular intentions. And that's one of the things we do in the church, in the Holy Mass, we have the prayer of the intercession. So when you look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, you find the different Paul telling Timothy why we should pray for all the leaders, all the people with authority, all the people, the priests, the our Pope, etc. Everything is mentioned there in first letter of uh, Timothy chapter, second, uh, chapter 2. Now when you look at what is pleasing to God is when, when others pray to God, so that means because of the love of our fellow human beings, we pray for them. We pray for them to execute their responsibilities in the best way possible, like according to the will of God. So that is very important. So that is the reason we all pray for our fellow human beings. Today we look at scriptures and see how we can understand praying for others and also the intercession prayer which is so very important for each one of us. We can see right from the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. We find at different point in time, different people praying for us, praying for the people as a community. So when you look at First uh, Timothy chapter 2 verse 1, we say intercede for the others, intercede for our community, intercede for our family, intercede for our friends, intercede for anybody who asks our prayers. Then we should also pray in uh, verse 2, pray for the kings and the authorities, for the governments who rule us, for the governments who create the policies, for people within the government. We got to pray for them as well. And in verse 3, we find that it pleases God when we pray for others to do their best according to his holy will, then it pleases God. When you look at Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12, we find that for the sin of many, God sent his only son who interceded for the sins of the entire humanity. And that's been foreshadowed and foretold in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, we got to intercede in spirit, pray in spirit. So when we pray in spirit, God understands the need. 
So when we pray in spirit, we pray with our soul, heart and mind. So when we pray in that total wholesomeness of our existence, then God answers our prayers. When you look at Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 16, he mentions that do not pray for the people who disobey God or who have not accepted God. So how do we pray for them? We have to only pray for those people to be brought back to the fold of the, shef uh, the shepherd. So that we need to really contemplate and pray for that first that that insight to be given to those people and then we can God will listen to that prayers when you look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 2 we should always thank God in all of our intercessions first we have to thank God only after thanking him we tell Lord we pray for these intentions according to our human knowledge and wisdom. We consider this to be good. But if it is your, it is you, your will, if it, this is according to your holy will, then you grant us these wishes. Now, Matthew chapter 5 verse 44, Jesus tells the apostles and us, love your enemies, enemies all those people who hurt us in different forms and pray for those who persecute us. So when people put us in trouble and people who enjoy in our miseries, we need to pray for them. We need to thank God for giving us that opportunity to suffer for them so that they will be transformed. And you look at 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 19. The people of that time asked Samuel to pray to God to grant them the good things of life at that point in time. Likewise, in Numbers chapter 12 verse 13, Moses cried out on behalf of the people of Israel, Lord, please forgive them and grant them these goodness. Let them get what they want. You know, like that's what Moses, on behalf of all the entire people, was praying to God. Now, when you look at Acts chapter 7, verse 60, we find Stephen praying, interceding for his persecutors. For people who stoned Stephen, he said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he also prayed for Paul at, at that time he was Saul. So he, Stephen prayed even for Saul and you see the transformation in Saul to become Paul and now we, we have the epistles and you know the message of God's love and mercy is spread throughout the universe. Now when you look at Acts chapter 8 verse 24, Simon Peter is seeking the community to pray for him. So we understand that we need to seek whenever we feel low, whenever we feel that we are weak, we need to ask our fellow human beings to pray for us. And the best people are the people within our community. When we go and tell them in humility that we need their prayers and they would definitely pray for us. And if that prayer will be effective and it will be answered according to his holy will. When you look at uh, Job chapter 42 verse 8, God tells him, my servant Job will pray for them, for the friends of Job. And Job was uh, almost recovering from that. Now 1 Kings chapter 13 verse 16, intercede to the Lord that my hand may be restored. The king is asking the prophet to intercede for him. Likewise, we see, in Acts chapter 12, verse 5, the church was earnestly praying for them. So we as a community should pray for every church member within our community. And also we should pray for all the priests, the deacons, the bishops, all the Eucharistic ministers, all the people whom we come across. So that when we pray, 
for them the prayer becomes effective and it will be answered it's very powerful when people pray for others and especially when it is prayed for within the community who are carrying out god's responsibilities and the uh, servicing uh, everybody you know celebration of the holy eucharist etc and that's very powerful and that's very needed in the present times we also find that in hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 jesus always lives to intercede so jesus is alive he is present because he is present he is alive we are also alive so he is constantly interceding for us and we need to accept that fact acknowledge that fact keep thanking god for our lord jesus christ whenever we keep thanking our almighty god and father for lord jesus christ our prayers are answered because the words of jesus himself was whatever you ask in my name my father will grant it therefore we got to intercede through the name of lord jesus christ now james chapter 5 verse 16 confess your sins to one another the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective when we confess our sins to one another we become righteous because we become pure and holy we cleanse ourselves and once we are cleansed our heart is pure and when we pray in that righteousness our prayers will be effective and powerful and when we pray for our fellow human beings it becomes all the more effective now in psalm 25 verse 22 the psalmist prays, deliver Israel, O God, for the troubles. Because the psalmist is praying and he wants God to deliver them from the clutches of their enemies, the clutches of all the evil. So when we pray for the other person, when we pray for our community, when we pray for all the authorities, when we pray for all the people who are in the decision-making process, who are doing the administrative people, and we also pray for people who are in the front line in this current COVID-19 pandemic, we continue to pray for all the people who have, whose jobs and whose responsibilities have escalated to beyond our thinking, because they are the people in the front line who is trying to keep the society alive so we need to pray for them but before we pray we need to make ourselves righteous by confessing our sins by keeping our heart and mind pure and then when we pray our prayer will become effective and powerful now uh, finally uh, the, the intercession we have always uh, countered some questions from some of our protestant brothers they keep telling why pray for saints when we have jesus our lord who is interceding for us yes jesus does intercede for us he is holy and is most pure and he is alive and he is with us but then at the same time jesus bestowed on us the holy spirit who would guide us till the end of times so when the holy spirit is given to us the Holy Spirit has prompted us to have our patron saints experienced by our church fathers in the past. Our guardian angel, which is again experienced by our fathers in the past. Likewise, Mother Mary, who is also one who prays with us and magnifies the prayer to Jesus. So even the saints and the guardian angels, they all pray together and Mother Mary magnifies everything together and then gives it to Jesus and then Jesus intercedes to our Creator God. So this is a process. We have different levels here. We, yes, we can't pray. We can pray to Jesus directly, but then we have to be pure and holy. How we can be pure and holy? We have to do what Jesus has commanded us in his scriptures when he walked on this earth. 
So we need to understand that and then do Jesus. The one thing Jesus said, two commandments, love your God with all your heart, mind and soul and love your fellow human beings like yourself. So when you see these two commandments and also Jesus said, you can have life in you only if you eat my body and drink my flesh. So we need to understand that and eat his body, drink his blood. And he also invested authority to all the apostles and then it was transitioned to the present day priests for our reconciliation, for confessing our sins. So once we confess our sins, once we feed on his body and blood, then we become righteous. And then when we pray, when we intercede for others, then it becomes powerful and effective. The people, the saints to whom we intercede, the saints have gone through the process and they have all been cleaned by the precious blood of Lord Jesus Christ and they can sin no more. Whereas we as human beings, even when we get reconciled, we continue to sin every other moment. But we get moments of purity when we have just done our reconciliation and our Holy Eucharist when we are fed on the body, blood. So within that time, when we pray, I think it becomes very powerful. So that is the reason we pray through the saints because the saints are cleansed with the most precious blood of Jesus and they can never sin again. Whereas we, we will be sinning over and over again because as long as we have this human frailty. And all the saints who have gone past us, they are all alive. They are not dead. So when people cannot say, the Protestant brothers cannot say we are praying to dead people. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you live forever with him. So all the saints who have existed and who have passed on from this physical life, they all are alive and are with Jesus Christ. So when we pray through them, they intercede for us as noted in the book of Revelation that the saints are always in the presence of the Creator God and that is Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you my brothers and sisters. I hope you enjoyed this session. I look forward to hear from you. Bye now.